Um, <clears throat> good morning, my name is Stretch Hoff. Uh, I'm the interviewer for the Public Library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County. And this morning, uh, it's December 18th, uh, I have the pleasure of talking with Arthur Lakes. <clears throat> um, and our camera operator today is uh, Dennis Daly. And uh, Arthur's son, Mark, is also here with us. So, good morning. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Not quite. <clears throat> um, I guess let's just start um, off with uh, your early years, where you were born and raised. And I was born in Lexington, Lexington Kentucky. Mm -hmm. When I was three years old, we moved to Elmwood Place. And that's, where's Elmwood Place? In Cincinnati? Cincinnati. <coughs> know where St. Bernard is? Yes. Uh -huh. It's just past St. Bernard. Uh -huh. And I lived there for years. And then World War II come and I moved to, we moved to Carthage which is part of Cincinnati, uh -huh. just north of Elmwood Place. And we lived there a couple of years, and then I was drafted in World War II. Uh -huh. uh, so did you, where did you go to high school? Mechanical High School, that's a trade school. Uh -huh. It's on McMillan Avenue. Okay. And it's not there anymore. It, Evaporated. My old high school is not there anymore. There's a <laughs> Kroger parking lot right now. Um, I don't know what there. I think there's a big building there where, where mechanical used to be. Yeah. Now, uh, what happened? What did you do after high school? Well, after high school, I. <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I worked in a gambling home. <clears throat> really? Yeah, for a couple of years. Uh huh. Right here. Was it in the Cincinnati area here? Or? Yeah. Well, it was Elmwood <clears throat> Place, and that's mm -hmm. just more or less in Cincinnati. Yeah. I worked there for, and I got drafted in the Army. What year was that you got drafted? Uh, 1950, <clears throat> I guess. Mm -hmm. I was 18. It was. Wait a minute, 1942. Mm -hmm. I was 18. 18. The week after I was 18, and I was born in February. The mm -hmm. week after I was 18, I was drafted. Okay. Um, then where, tell me about uh, where, where did you go for your training? For the Fort Dix. Okay. Well, I went, to, what is it, out west first? What is it? I forget the name of the place out mm -hmm. there. I was out there for a while and then ended up at Fort Dix and then was shipped overseas from there. And <clears throat> where did you leave the United States? Where it shipped from uh, what port? Out east of, from Fort Dix, I near, I don't know where, it was around Atlantic City or something. Okay. New York or someplace, mm -hmm. I don't know. Now, was this build up? Did you go to France? You say? Yeah. Okay. Uh, tell me what. Just tell me your story as you go through there. Well, in France, and then they invaded Europe. France. They invaded France. I was in England. They invaded France, and D two. I went over. Okay, so you were in the second day after, <coughs> after they invaded France. Okay, and that was at Omaha Beach? Yeah. Okay, so did you come from England over to France? Okay. And then I was a scout and I went through France, scout, and I went in the hedgerows, which is terrible. Mm -hmm. Never know what you're going to see in the edge rows. Like, they were like a, one on each side of you, say about a 150 yard farm or something. You, you on one side and the Germans on the other side, you could hear them talking 
He said on one side in the evening and heard the Germans talking over on the other side in the evening. Oh my goodness. That went on for a while. Did you have those clickers they talked about or was that just the paratroopers when they first? I didn't have nothing. <laughs> I just had my rifle yeah. and I carried uh, with me a little coffee thing to keep the coffee hot. Mm -hmm. And I'd fill that up every day mm -hmm. and carry that with me with my pack. And I'd have coffee every day. Every once in a while, some of my buddies would bum a cup off of me. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I had a little stove where I heated my coffee. Is that right? Where'd you get the coffee? Just uh... I'd bum it off of trucks or uh -huh. anybody I could going through France. Um, Tell me about the day you landed on the second day of the invasion. What were the beaches like then? Oh, um, when I walked over, there were bodies laying around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I could see the bodies. Still, some of the bodies still there, and, and it, you can see it on shows sometimes. There's bodies laying around, and it's a tough thing to see. You just have to go on. Mm -hmm. Now, what uh, uh, kind of a ship were you on when you landed? Was it a, uh, the Liberty ships or the LSTs? Or it was LSTs, okay. more or less. And then what was on those ships? What were you? Just does. Okay, so it wasn't any of the equipment or anything, it was just? Just soldiers. Soldiers. And we got off and, <clears throat> and the beach was cleared there, but the bodies were still there. Mm -hmm. And then we got through the first village and we start fighting. Okay, so it, uh, was that, um, so when you first got there, there was all the equipment's being unloaded and so forth, and, but the fighting was somewhat inland at that point. About not well, too far, though. <laughs> not about a hundred yards or so. Is that all? Yeah. Oh my God. Like there's villages right there on the beach. You got through the bit village and you start fighting mm -hmm. and in the hedgerows. That's where the hedgerows were. And how long were you in those hedgerows? That, that was a big I don't day. exactly know. I mean, I just fought and went on. We just fought and went on. We, okay. We don't know exactly when or what we had our mind on the war. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, uh, were you a scout at that point? Not exactly at that point, I don't <clears throat> think. I mean, must have been a month or so when the other scouts got killed. Mm -hmm. And I was the only one with combat experience, we kept getting people in, mm -hmm. and new people. But all your experience was right there, wasn't it? Yeah. Because you got, <clears throat> you were in, that was your first theater or whatever yeah, you might call it. that's where, and that's I, where I learned. Yeah, and you were the most experienced one and you just landed. <laughs> I think there were seven of us left, I don't know, mm -hmm. the original platoon. Yeah. And the commander says, Art, you're the only one that you had to get ahead. And mm -hmm. so I didn't say nothing. I just, you don't say nothing. You just do as you're told. Say yes, sir. And go on. Know. And I was a scout until I. Were you a scout all through your service in, uh, in the war? More or less. <clears throat> Tell us what a scout does. Uh, he goes out in front keeps out of sight and watches what, where the Germans are and what they're doing. And then he reports back what he saw and where they are and where the, all the big artillery is and where the machine guns are and you let them know so they know what they're getting into and mm -hmm. so they know what to decide to do before they jump on. Mm -hmm. And I did that until I got wounded myself. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> we talked earlier, and just uh, I'd like you to tell it again about your uh, 
uh, when you were in that house and uh, you were hiding in the basement. Yeah. Tell us that again, please. Well, I was, went in this village, I don't know, I thought it was St. Lo or something, I ain't sure. Mm -hmm. But I went in a lot of village and the Germans were coming back and all I could do was hide and I hid in the basement behind a bunch of boxes and the Germans were up above and one of them come down and looked around. He was too lazy to look behind the box of St. Kevin and mm -hmm. he went back up and they finally left and I went back up. And I come out and I started back and I looked up and here come an American, one American walking up. I get, think he was American, mm -hmm. walking up. I passed by and I just said hi and I went on. Mm -hmm. I hear re read in a book or paper later about this one guy saying he was the first one there, but shit, I was there way before. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? How long were you in the house? Oh, just I don't know, half hour or so. That's yeah. all. Did that interrupt your coffee? Break? Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't have nothing. I didn't worry about nothing, and I just worried about keeping quiet and out of sight. Mm -hmm. Maybe that ain't bravery, but that's what I did. Oh, boy. I just, I just can't imagine uh, that feeling. Well, it's not that feeling. It's what I hate worse is the thing I keep remember is when it's up the side of that hill directing artillery fire down on that. <clears throat> and I keep saying to myself, a lot of them deserve it, but there were probably a bunch down there like me just doing his job and yeah. wasn't Nazis, but we're just German people. We're told and to do it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I was uh, reading uh, the 8th Infantry Division was part of Patton's army? 80th. 80th, I'm sorry, the 80th. Well, in them days, you was in one army one time and then another <laughs> army other time. So I don't know exactly. I think it was with Patton. I know the last I remember was starting with Patton going off. And uh -huh. Where I ended up, I don't know really. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, uh, once, can you just uh, trace your path? Uh, basically, you uh, landed in Omaha Beach. Yeah. And then you were um, headed for Germany. Went to France mm -hmm. and Alsace. I forget what the Alsace is. I remember going through the Alsace. Well, that whole Alsace-Lorraine area seems to switch hands every century or so. <laughs> well, I mean, <clears throat> I remember going through there and stopping in villages. And Mm -hmm. Making sure villages are clear, towns are clear. Some of them were vacated, and some you find a few people still in their houses. And you tell them they better get out, or when you're a scout, you better mm -hmm. tell them better get out. And, and you go on, you just do your job. I remember what is it when I went to the top of this hill it was, and they had a big house on it. You know what the, I forget what they call them. Mm -hmm. The France call the castles, you mean? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. They, and went in there and there was a man in there and I looked at him and I told him he better get out. I looked around and looked out there and there were horses out there and everything. The war was going on all the around. The war was going on all over and this guy was sitting in this house <clears throat> and there was these horses in the, around the barn there. Mm -hmm. I went on. Went down to the next one. I think it was St. Lowe. And I went through St. Lowe and that's where the German come back and I was got in the basement and hid. 
Uh, he left and I come out and that's where I've seen this other soldier walking in when I was walking out. And, <laughs> then when I thought the place was vacant. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty busy place. <laughs> then when we I come out and I told him it was clear, and we start marching through, all of a sudden a girl stuck her head out <laughs> of the window and start cussing us and said, we chased her boyfriend out of town and she was cussing us. <laughs> I'll never forget stuff like that. I, that ain't part of the war. But I know, it seems so unusual. It, it is. Yeah. She was still in there. I, she, I, she was probably the only one still in town that I knew of. <laughs> she stuck her head out and started cussing us. Yeah. And we went on. Did she cuss you in French? I don't know. You I just knew she was mad. Huh? She was just a screaming, <laughs> waving something at us. Yeah. Uh, we, we just marched on to and yeah. went on to the next town. And that's more or less what I did was out in front. And were you a scout the whole time you were in uh, World War II? More or less. Okay. That's about the first couple of weeks I was a light machine gunner. Okay. And then <clears throat> people were being killed or wounded and then like so, I say, it was about seven dollars or seven people back in the my mm -hmm. platoon mm -hmm. had been were, wounded or killed. And they told me to get out in front. Mm -hmm. I was one of the few that had experience yet. Okay. I saw on the, on the map you showed me earlier that where it traced where you went. When you uh, crossed into Germany, uh, where was that? Well, like I say, I don't know exactly where it was, but that was where I was on the side of this hill, directing it on the Germans. Okay, the artillery. Mm -hmm. And the next day, <clears throat> we went down and went into Germany. I don't know exactly where it was. Yeah. And that's when I got wounded. Mm -hmm. And that's when they, I ended up in a hospital out there someplace and my first nurse was from Cincinnati. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I woke up and she was from Cincinnati. I'll be darned. That's amazing, small mm -hmm. world. And then I was there and they sent me to another hospital on the border, <clears throat> and, then, and then they put me in an airplane and sent me to, what is this hospital in Indiana them days? I forget the name of it. So about when was that date-wise? What was it, 1944, late in 44? It was about a month before the war ended. Okay, so you were there. Okay. Uh -huh. I was home on medical leave when the war ended, and I had to go back to <clears throat> what is that hospital right over across the border in Indiana? In Indiana. I, I, my memory's gone. Yeah. Well, I think you're remembering an awful lot. <laughs> Did you? Um, so, if you were there uh, about a month before the war ended, uh, do you recall how close to Berlin? You were. I mean, did you go clear? Uh, no, I didn't. I, I didn't get to Berlin. I didn't get near Berlin. I, I didn't get near the Rhine River. I was on the way to the Rhine River when I got wounded. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Mm -hmm. Did you ever uh, see General Patton? Yeah, I walked past him. And then I think in the hospital, when I was in the hospital, he'd come in the hospital, visit us. I know Patton wasn't an easy man. He was a son of a gun, wasn't he? <laughs> I was laying there and <clears throat> wounded, and he went up to one of them and told him to get his ass out of bed. He there ain't nothing wrong with him. Mm. 
Patton was. Yeah. I just looked at him and I glad it wasn't me. Mm -hmm. He said that too, because I'm a hot head too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he um, rather blunt there. But so, I guess he was a good soldier. I mean, he, <clears throat> when you was with Patton, you kept going. Oh, you, yeah. you didn't retreat. He was fast. He was. Uh, you you know. didn't retreat. If you retreated, you had to be dragging a lot of dead people back with you. Uh -huh. Or you didn't retreat. Yeah. So, Patton was a good general, I guess. I don't know. Oh, yeah, one of the best. Yeah. Now, did you. Uh, <clears throat> So when you were uh, wounded then, this was a month before the war ended, uh, you came back to the hospital in Indiana. Yeah. Okay. And then what happened there? How, how long were you there? I don't know. I was there when I got my discharge. Mm -hmm. They gave me my discharge. And I went home, I stayed home. And at this, at this point, you're about 19 years old or 20? Oh, I guess I was, I was 18 when I went in. I guess I was 20 years old at least. I was two years in the mm -hmm. war, I guess. Okay. So what did you do after the war? I went to work for a place called Auto Light, and I took an apprenticeship to be a tool and die maker. Auto Light? Yeah. Okay. I'm from a small town in Fustory, Ohio, and they had a big auto light plant there. Well, I was apprentice at Auto Light, and they were where GE is now. Out in uh, <clears throat> Evendale, or yeah, North? yeah. They were there for ten years, mm -hmm. and I served apprenticeship there, and they GE moved them out. And I went to work for a place called Husky, and it's tool and die maker for Husky for 20 some odd years. Wow. And then Husky moved out, and I went to work for a place called KD Lamp down in Cincinnati for five years. And they went out of business and I retired. <laughs> and when was that? I think it was I was working for them. I was already retired. So that was 89 when I retired, I guess. I was 65 and worked for them for about four or five years at three days a week. Mm -hmm. I worked to 70, so that was 94 when I retired. <laughs> Is that right? No. <clears throat> so tell me about your family. You uh, well, came I, home and... I had the best family in the world. I'm lucky. Good. I, I married You're... the best wife. I wouldn't give her up for nothing and I got the best children. I, I go to, I got a nice home and I go to the living room window and look up to the sky and about two or three times a week and thank God for the life I got. Oh boy. We're not wealthy, <clears throat> but like I say, I got enough to live on, mm -hmm. and I got a family that you couldn't ask for any, any better. Wonderful, wonderful. And Where'd you meet your wife? At a dance in St. Bernard. She's from St. Bernard. Mm -hmm. I used to be a jitterbug. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> ben, she was a jitterbug, and we used to go to dances. Mm -hmm. We used to go to dances in different places. There used to be a place in Edgemont called Castle Farm. It used to be like a big castle that was up top of the hill in Edgemont there. Mm -hmm. And they had dancing. Big bands, the best bands, the best singers used to come there mm -hmm. in them days. Yeah. And there were about 10 or 12 guys that reserved <coughs> a table right at the corner of the bandstand. 
one of the guys we bummed with, his brother would, ended up a waiter. For mm -hmm. <laughs> we had a private table there. <laughs> and we didn't have a trouble getting dates because that was the place to go on Saturday <laughs> night. <laughs> and all the girls wanted to come with us. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I met my wife. Mm -hmm. And how many children do you have? I had seven and one died. Uh -huh. Boy, seven children. That's a wonderful family. I got family. six and I got a wonderful family. How many grandchildren? Nine. Nine. That's a wonderful family. And not a one of them caused trouble. Mm -hmm. Not many people can say that. That's, that's especially today, that's really true. Yeah, so I'm... Yeah. Very lucky man, mm -hmm. like I say, a couple times a week, I go in my living room and look out and thank God mm -hmm. for what I got. Yeah. I'm not a wealthy man. Well, you got wealth. Them Trumps and <clears throat> them, yeah. them big wealthy people can have theirs. I wouldn't trade them. Mm -hmm. well, that's wonderful. It's wonderful to feel that way. It really is. Did you? Um, where were you when the war was over? Were you still in the hospital? Uh, well, when the war ended, I was on sick leave in Elmwood. Okay. Or Carthage, my family lived in. I was mm -hmm. home on sick leave when the war ended. Mm -hmm. And I went down to Elmwood VFW, and the guy that ran Elmwood VFW was a World War I veteran. And he took me in and I joined the BFW in Ellenwood. Mm -hmm. I still belong to it. Good. I go there ever so often when they have a meeting. And mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, friends from the war that you met during the war? Uh, do you go to reunions or does that happen or not? Uh, <clears throat> I used to keep in touch with my friends but I'm the only one left mm -hmm. that I know of. Mm -hmm. Everyone, even my friends from home, like my old buddies from home before the war, yeah. they're all gone. Yeah. So how old are you, Arthur? I'm 83, I'll be 84 in a couple months. Congratulations, you're in good health, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, <coughs> I think that's because I walk. Mm -hmm. I walk a lot. Well, that's good. I mean, I walk, like I said, through Europe. Uh huh. And I come home, and I still walk. And I take walks up at, in the summertime, summertime up in the park <coughs> near me. Mm -hmm. What is it, Miami View Park or something like that? I call it. Got uh -huh. a walking trail. And then my kids bought a treadmill for me and so I could walk in the wintertime. Do you do a treadmill? You put me to shame. My, my <laughs> wife wants me to get the treadmill. <clears throat> um, I don't know if you saw the television show. I don't remember the name of it, but it, it was a, a show where um, a group of servicemen go back to uh, Normandy <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, it showed them going into schools in the little towns there, and they still, they're keeping that memory of that invasion alive and the fact that they, you know, you, you saved not only France, you saved America. But it was uh, really touching that you saw these children and they knew about it, and they, so they're really keeping that alive. I think that's a, a wonderful tribute what you fellows did over there. Yeah. I think we did a good job. It cost a lot. <clears throat> and I still remember the friends I had. Some of them went out and disappeared and didn't come back. I don't know what happened to them. Mm -hmm. Like my friend Dick Matter that, that he he was still living, the last I heard. He was from Baltimore. They kicked me, that's where they kicked me and told me to keep moving. I was trying to help him. 
Mm. Okay. Yeah, so we used to write letters to each other, <coughs> but we haven't been writing letters for four or five years. Mm -hmm. I haven't been in touch with him. But he's the last one. Like I say, my friends from home. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that always uh, <clears throat> interests me uh, is the physical shape that you had to be in. Um, I, I, I don't know how much you carried on your back. Was it 50 or 60 pounds, Bound, yeah. something like that? And to, uh, <clears throat> when they told you to get moving, you had to run. And, Sometimes and, uh, you had to run. You had to walk fast. Yeah. Yeah. And you weren't getting much sleep. Nope. Wasn't, all the food was K ration, and you was lucky to <clears throat> eat that. They gave you very little time to eat that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I carried a little stove to. I can't believe you carried a stove. That's a well, it was only about that big. <laughs> yeah. It had gasoline yeah. in it, just enough to. And I'd put it down and heat my coffee, or if it was a C ration, they come in cans. I'd put the C ration mm -hmm. on there and heat that too. That's why I carried it. I was the only one that I knew of that carried one of them little stoves. Where'd you get it? Didn't, wasn't it a standard I, issue? Or? I don't remember exactly. <laughs> I know I had it and I carried it and I kept carrying it until I got wounded. Mm -hmm. So with the, um, with the, su the, ply, the supply trucks or so forth that carried all your rations and so forth, they were always behind you? and Way behind. Yeah, and then, uh, I, I guess the life of a soldier fascinates me. Like, how often were you able to take a shower? Oh, you didn't worry about showers. You, you would go for weeks, would you? Yeah. Yeah. You you weren't even thinking about a shower. <clears throat> mm -hmm. them, them showers were, you didn't have a shower. Yeah. You might go down the creek or something and wash yourself a little, but take a bath or a shower. I bet when you came home that was a real luxury, wasn't it? It was. It was. <clears throat> I mean, you, you don't know, you didn't even think about it. Mm -hmm. All you think about is keeping alive. And, the, and uh, the change of clothing, I mean, you had, you had one uniform and that was it, right? You just kept going. Uh -huh. If you stunk, I don't know. I, I don't know where I stunk or not. Well, you we're all in the same boat, I think. <laughs> I just think that's a part of the, a part of the story that not everybody thinks about. And I, it's, that's always interested me that just to try and put myself in your place and, and the daily life of a soldier. Well, I don't know where I told you this about this one guy. He was one of the last guys in that they put with me for one day. He, one night he jumped in my hole with me. And we was talking, he had three or four kids, he told me. He was a nice looking guy and mm -hmm. he was 30 some odd years old. We were sitting there talk, talking and it could become daylight. All of a sudden he, looked up, stuck his head out of his hole, and he got killed, blood mm -hmm. on me. Mm -hmm. And I should have told him not to do that, yeah. but I didn't. And that's been on my conscience too, not a <clears throat> Well, you know, if he, if he'd been in a lot of combat, I mean, being 30 years old, he was probably in combat mm -hmm. and should have known yeah, it's, but I remember stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's another thing why I shake, remember stuff like that. Yeah. But you also have to remember that, like you, you said earlier, you were doing your job. Um, all you fellows, you don't think you're heroes, but you certainly saved the world, I think. And uh, you were doing your job. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for everything I've got. Mm -hmm. What are your interests now? You're, uh, 
my family. Uh -huh. My family comes first and everything. Do they all, do they, all the children live in the area? No, oh, I got one son who's in the park service. He lives, where does he live, Mark? Great, great Falls, Montana. Mm -hmm. He's in the park service. <clears throat> mm -hmm. He's graduated from college and went to the park service, and he's been in the park service since. Mm -hmm. We go visit him every once in a while. He's <laughs> been all over. I mean, he's been north, south, east, and west, <coughs> uh -huh. and I've seen the whole United States visiting him. Uh -huh. You know, uh, you're very fortunate to have you, so much family close by. And, uh, I know we're, I sp we're spread out. I only have two children, but they're spread out. One's in California, one's in, in uh, uh, Charlotte, so it's real, it's real nice uh, yeah. experience. And I got this family, and not of one caused any problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, you read the paper about these families having all these troubles, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and I didn't have one problem. And thank God, I hope I don't have any. I mean, well, I think I'm you're, so I think you're clear of that now. <laughs> I'm so lucky. That's wonderful. Uh, where were you uh, when uh, the Japanese uh, surrendered? I guess I was home, probably. Okay. Probably, I think I was home. Mm -hmm. I know I was home when the war ended. Yeah, okay. Well, do you have any uh, other stories you'd like to share with us? <laughs> Did anything funny happen? Uh, I don't know what can happen too funny in, in the war, but... <clears throat> I don't know of anything. I probably remember when I leave. Mm -hmm. what, what was the last thing you did? You told me you were guarding uh, gold bullion at one point. Oh, uh, yeah. I was, uh, gold bullion? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> that's right. I come back. This was in England, I think. And they had a big box. And it was full of gold and waiting to get on a ship, and they dragged me out of the hospital bed. <laughs> I was in a hospital. Uh -huh. They dragged me out of the hospital, told me to get my uniform on, and took me out and put me at this box. And they says, they had a line around this box, and they hand me a carbine. And they says, if anyone steps over that car being shoot them. Wow. Did they tell you what was in the box? It was cold. Yeah. <laughs> and I That's looked. Amazing. And the people were around that box, and I told them, I says, I got orders. You step over that line, you're dead. And boy, they moved back. Mm -hmm. I'll bet. <laughs> Cause you're, because I would have killed them. Mm -hmm. That's your job. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm a little out of sequence here, but one thing I'm also interested in hearing is um, the buildup of the, the army in England. And it's amazing that was all kept a secret. But when you were there, uh, can you just give us a little bit of uh, comments on uh, your experiences uh, before you even across the channel? <laughs> like, were you living in uh, tents or? <clears throat> well, we were living in tents mostly. But we lived in barracks and then we lived in tents. And we got some leave and we'd go to nearest towns, mm -hmm. and look through the towns. But I think they, women had orders to stay away from us or something, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they still did come. We went to dances whenever they had a little dance around there. Uh -huh. They used to have dances around there mm -hmm. where we could go up and dance. And you were a jitterbugger, so yeah. you were ready, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> have you ever been back uh, to France? Or England? I've been back to England, but I've never been back to France. Mm -hmm. I was over in England. My daughter-in-law's, Mark's wife is 
Her parents are from England. Mm -hmm. I think they're from England. I'm not sure. Yeah. But, so they went on. You visited there. I went to visit her parents in England. I think a couple times. Mm -hmm. It was nice. I'd like to go back mm -hmm. and go up there. I think if I ever live long enough, I want to go to Ireland. I never was in Ireland. Mm -hmm. I'd like to go visit Ireland. Mm -hmm. What what's your interest there in Ireland? I don't know. Just it seems like a nice place to seems like you go into <coughs> Irish pub in England, they are all having fun. Mm -hmm. and Ireland seems like fun to me. I think it is, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But I mean the Irish have fun. I mean you go to an Irish pub, it's fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to go to Ireland, mm -hmm. but I've never been. So I guess it's just me. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> but you've never had any desire to go back, uh, like to the beaches and see them today? And uh, Well, like I've been to England, and, but I never did go over to France. Yeah. And I drove down to the beaches when I was in England. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I didn't cross over. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see General Eisenhower? I don't know where I did or not. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I just read him and seen him in movies or something. Or, I don't mm -hmm. know. I just, I'm just an old infantry man that walked through Europe and come back and still living. Yeah, very fortunate. I want to trade my life, like I said, <clears throat> big money people could have their money, but they can't buy what I got. Right. And it's wonderful that that's your outlook on life because it's, uh, you're obviously very happy about all that. My marriage and my kids and my grandkids. How long have you been married? 57 years. That doesn't happen very often today, does it? <laughs> Just your generation, I think, you know. 57 years, the cutest little girl redhead you ever seen. <clears throat> redhead? Oh boy. Was well, there anything else you'd, you'd like to uh, tell us? No. I just thank God for what I got. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see these wars over. That would be a blessing, wouldn't it? I'd like to pick up a, when I go to the hospital, they just tell me to forget everything. But <clears throat> how can I forget everything? I come back, and pick a newspaper up, what's it about? War. Mm -hmm. I turn television on, what's it about? War. How can someone like this, me, forget about anything when yeah. It's all over. Mm -hmm. I like to read the comics, read Dagwood and mm -hmm. all them comics. That's the first thing I read, try to laugh, and then I start reading the paper and it takes the laughing out of it. Yeah. We never seem to learn, do we? <clears throat> and they never, people never seem to think. Like I says, these people start wars, why don't they find out where them people stay and go over and drop an A-bomb on that mm -hmm. and keep our people living. Yeah. That's what I don't understand. If people mm -hmm. like that, and then maybe people learn yeah. to not start wars mm -hmm. if they focus in on <clears throat> them. But that's... Have you been to the uh, World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C.? No, I don't think so. Okay. It's, uh, I don't know if you could ever get there, but <clears throat> it's really a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I think it's, uh, it's just refocused the people, the thinking of what you and your uh, men and women did for the world, not just 
you know, they liberated Europe and you saved the United States and our way of life. And it's just a, uh, I think, a very meaningful thing to see. Well, we was just doing our duty. That's right. All. Well, you, <clears throat> you all seem to say that, and I think that that's how you looked at it, and you uh, you were obeying orders, but you were you don't think you're heroes, but you are. <laughs> I just did what I was told to do. Right. Okay. And I thank God I come through it. I guess say I go and thank God couple times a week for mm -hmm. to be alive and to have the family I got. Yep, we're very lucky to come through it. Just very lucky. So I don't do, Mark, do you have any uh, things you want? for a minute. Did you talk how you were wounded? <clears throat> no, we didn't talk about that. I mean, how you were wounded uh, in your arm? Oh, wounded in the arm. I was, I was in an attack. I was, and I, that's when I stopped and looked at my buddy to help him. And I got kicked to keep going, and I was going, and all of a sudden, swish, something hit me in the arm. Mm -hmm. And it was bleeding. So I went to the first aid guy. He wrapped it up. He put something on it, wrapped it up, says, keep going. Like a tourniquet? Was it up here above your elbow yeah, or right up in here? Right up in here. The fleshy there. part, you know. I looked, there ain't even a scar <clears> there <throat> now. So it didn't break any bones or anything, so uh -uh. I was lucky. But he, he just wrapped it up and says, keep moving. Keep moving. <laughs> Nowadays, if you get a little wound, you go to the hospital for a month. Mm -hmm. It's all different. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you got a little wound, you just kept moving. Uh -huh. What put you in the hospital? When I got shell in the back, artillery shell. Where was that about? So you got hit in the back? With, uh, with artillery shell. I was wounded twice. Oh, okay. I thought the, this was what put you in the hospital. Oh, artillery shell. That's where I was on the way to the Rhine. Mm -hmm. I was on the way to the Rhine River. And we were in attack. We were attacking. All of a sudden, the artillery shell hit behind me. Mm -hmm. I ended up in that hospital so, tent with the girl from Cincinnati. Okay. Yeah. So, like a piece of uh, shrapnel or something? Is that what hit you? Quite a few pieces. Okay. It was all through my back. And today, is your back, you look fine. And I'm walking. You're walking. And I got the shakes. On the treadmill, you're walking on the treadmill. <laughs> <clears throat> then I have my martini at four o'clock. Mm -hmm. That calms me down a little. Mm -hmm. That martini, I don't know why, it makes me calm. Mm -hmm. I may, it might be in my mind or it might be in the drink. Probably both. <laughs> but I thank God for the, my life. Well, yeah, that's wonderful. Um, I think we've covered everything. It was uh, a very interesting uh, experience you had. I just, just, I can't imagine it. I've never done it myself. Uh, but thank you for for letting us uh, live the way we live because of your efforts. Well, I thank God for what I got. I'm well paid. Yes. Right. I'm well paid with my wife and kids. Why don't you end the thing? You have, you have a daughter that's in the Army. I have what? You have a daughter that's in the Army right now. <coughs> I have, Sherry. Oh, oh yeah, I got a daughter in the Army now. She's over in Iraq. Is that right? Yeah, she's a nurse over in Iraq. She's mm -hmm. a lieutenant colonel in the nursing corps over in Iraq. So when, what does she uh, say about that whole situation? Well, she talks to her mother about every day, I think. Really? Yeah, or sends a letter. <coughs> mm -hmm. They send letters to each other on 
computers or something, I don't know. My wife's downstairs and on the computer. They can email each other, I guess, can't they? I, I don't know what it is. I don't interrupt them. Mm -hmm. and how long has she been over there? How long has she been over there, Mark? She's been over there since September, since about Labor Day. And then when is she supposed to come home? Do you know how long the... the She's supposed to stay between a, a year and 14 months, I think. Mm -hmm. And then she can come home. Yeah. <clears throat> well, um, another thing that's interesting to me is that some of the, of the fellows in World War II, <clears throat> you know, they're over there for four years, within the service of five years, and they don't see their families at all. No. And uh, that's got to be a, another hardship. That is. Yeah. They that didn't was. have computers to email back and forth. and All you got was letters, and them were far between yeah. because they couldn't deliver them. When you're on the front line, you don't get nothing. Right. And you were out in front of the front line. Uh, so you yeah. So did any of your other uh, children serve in the, in the service? Just her. Okay. Thank you. Well, you're proud of her, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. It's good you can hear from her often. Though. That's that's. Uh, I don't know how they do it, but, but she's my wife's writing her letters every day. And uh -huh. She's getting letters every day. I don't know how it's going, and what's going on there. Yeah. I just thank God that she's living. And hope she comes home safely. And I'll have a martini then. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> well, thank you very much. It's been really okay. interesting. You had a... And thank God for them guys fighting. Yes. Take care of yourselves, fellas. I know my wife and I, we see them in airports and things. We thank them. We go up and talk to them. And uh, I think the world, the United States at least, I think is uh, very much focused on this. They're very aware of the sacrifices the families are going through. Yeah, but I don't understand. We belong to what, uh, what is it, the uh, UN? United Nations. And where are they? Why, why did we belong to the UN? And they're supposed to be <coughs> fighting, and we're the only other nation, I think, besides England fighting. Mm -hmm. How come we're that? Why ain't the UN taking care of the war? Well, I think um, you should go talk about that because I think a lot of people feel the same way. Um, I mean, we pay money into the UN and we give money to other countries. Mm -hmm. Yet. A lot of politics, right? A lot of politics. I guess that's the only thing I can think of. Mm -hmm. We're saving money for the big oil people over in Europe. Mm -hmm. I think our president's got money over there. Well, I don't know much about that. But <laughs> <coughs> But I think we're we're done. pretty well done, and yeah. was, thank you. It's been very interesting. Okay. God bless you guys. God bless you guys.